everyone, and thank you for joining us for the second Student Voice Australia Symposium. My name is Carmen Butts, and I'll be one of your co-hosts for the symposium. I'm a psychology honor student from the University of the Sunshine Coast, and I also work within the Students as Partners space, assisting in the implementation of USC student governance framework, and facilitate in the training of the new student leaders and representatives. I am passionate about peer-to-peer -peer learning and student and staff partnership, which is why I'm so delighted to be your co-host today. But enough about me, I'll now hand you over to the other co-host to introduce herself. Thank you, Carmen. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Phil Levy. I'm Pro Vice Chancellor Student Learning at the University of Adelaide. Um, before I came to Adelaide, uh, I spent much of my career at the University of Sheffield in the UK and also some time as uh, Deputy, Vice, uh, Deputy uh, Chief Executive of the Higher Education Academy in the UK. Um, I'm absolutely uh, delighted to be co-hosting with Carmen today. Um, so, um, as I say, um, it's, it's fantastic to be uh, hosting the Student Voice Symposium in 2021 at the University of Adelaide. We have an audience that includes University of Adelaide students and staff and more than 100 colleagues from across Australia and overseas. So a very, very warm welcome to everybody here. We have, um, over the course of this afternoon and Thursday afternoon, we'll be sharing what we've learned as institutions and individuals about authentic student engagement through partnership, which is our theme. Our key theme uh, for the symposium is building better partnerships through representation, engagement, and sustainability. We do have an absolutely fabulous lineup uh, of speakers, and I'm hoping that you'll find the symposium inspiring uh, with many very practical takeaways and some great new connections uh, in your networks um, that you have made. Yep. Carmen, over to you to run through the program. Sounds good. So uh, Phil and I are going to start today's events by providing an overview of Student Voice Australia, which will be followed by case studies by Curtin University and Holmes Glen Institute. After a short break, we're going to go into an interactive session where staff and students can learn from one another. Um, and then following another short break from that, we will hear from uh, our keynote speaker, Oshin Hassan, where we'll have the opportunity to ask questions about Oshin's presentation and his work within the student the National Student Engagement Program from Ireland. Um, so as this is an online event, there are a few housekeeping points we'd like to mention. So first up, the symposium is delivered as a webinar, therefore the audio and video of all attendees are automatically muted, which uh, may be why you might not see yourself at the moment. But we do encourage you to interact with your fellow attendees using the chat function. You may uh, wish to post comments or share links to additional online resources via this channel. We also have a dedicated Q&A session at the conclusion of the keynote speakers. So please feel free to enter any of the questions you have for the speaker in the Q&A box. Please use this rather than the chat for the speaker specific questions. As with the face-to-face -face conference, we may not have the time to get to everybody's questions. So a random selection may be posed to the speaker. Please be mindful that um, the chat will be recorded along with the other aspects of this presentation. I'll hand it over back to you, Phil. Um, maybe we'll do a quick check-in to see if um, Isaac is back on board. Thanks, Carmen. Um, do we have Isaac with us yet? It looks as though we no, don't, I'm, unfortunately. I'm sorry, we don't. He's having some technical issues today. I'm sorry. He's still trying to come on board with us. It would be wonderful to welcome him when, when he does arrive. Uh, in the meantime, um, uh, perhaps I can... Uh, start with um, a few comments and remarks um, just to set the scene for the, the symposium with a little bit of the history of Student Voice Australia um, and some observations um, from where I sit in, in um, Adelaide on our themes. But I would like to start um, with my own acknowledgement of uh, the Ghana people. Uh, the original custodians of the Adelaide Plains and the lands on which the University of Adelaide uh, are built. And I'd like to pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging. So um, let's, um, let's start off with a, a little bit of a, a history of, of, of Student Voice Australia. Um, next slide, please. 
I, uh, I, I hope that everybody here uh, may have heard of Student Voice Australia, but if you haven't, it's a national network of institutions, staff and students committed to facilitating student engagement through partnership in institutional decision-making and governance for learning, teaching and the student experience. And in 2021, the, um, the uh, SVA uh, network is being hosted by the University of Adelaide on behalf of 17 inst member institutions who are participating this year. Uh, a little bit of the history. Um, Student Voice Australia really originated in the work of um, Emerita Professor Sally Varnum and her Office for Learning and Teaching fellowship work on this three theme a number of years ago. And the SVA itself was piloted in 2019. This was a fantastically successful pilot and uh, really set the, the groundwork for um, further expanding the, uh, the network and the work that we're doing um, or that we've done since in 2020 and 2021. Um, Sally led the pilot. I do want to also call out the fantastic work that Kate Walsh as project manager did um, and acknowledge the, the pioneering work really that laid the foundations for, for where we're at now. The pilot was funded through contributions of 10 collaborating tertiary education institutions. It was also supported by TEXA and a number of national student bodies and 34 institutions and over 350 staff and students engaged with the pilot. Um, the pilot was uh, evaluated and um, there was a clear indication that there was uh, uh, a lot of appetite that for the project to continue on and expand across the tertiary sector. Uh, it also, um, as an evaluation, highlighted a number of important pointers for future work. One of which, uh, not least of which, was how important uh, the network is for sharing, uh, for skills development opportunities for staff and students around the student voice um, and partnership theme. So um, we knew that when we um, further extended the project from the pilot that this these kinds of opportunities um, like this one today are really important um, for the development of the work across the sector. Um, we did, um, under the pilot, develop a range of resources. Um, these are all available via the SVA uh, website. One of those resources is the Step Up Principles Mapping Tool, um, which is just uh, pictured here on, on the slide, um, which provides a number of principles based on work that Sally took forward um, for institutions to use to kind of map um, our activities against those principles and see how we're tracking. In 2020, we had a little bit of a pause as a network um, for, I think, obvious reasons to do with um, the COVID pandemic response, but the network did come together towards the end of the year and uh, regrouped and rebooted and did some uh, really exciting work uh, developing, focusing on the development of uh, induction training for student representatives. And there are some resources relating to that on the website. And then in 2021, um, 17, as I say, institutions, and that's across the tertiary sector, inclusive of uh, TAFE institutions, as well as um, universities, have come together to um, take forward the project, to build a culture of student engagement within institutions, to build the capacity of student representatives and staff working with student representatives, and to learn from each other at a national level. Next slide, please. Thank you. So why is student voice and partnership important in Australia now? I think these are the four points that really came to me when I was reflecting on this. Of course, we are at a, an extraordinary moment, I think, in the sector. Uh, uh, our students, many, many students are facing key challenges just right now. Institutions are facing key challenges. But the foundation for the work that we're doing, I think, is because of the commitment that we have to um, putting students at the center of what we do, making sure that um, our institutions are equipped to support our students, to engage and succeed in their studies and go on to succeed when they leave university. And we know uh, that in order to do that, um, what we need to do is understand our students' needs, their expectations, how we can support them best. It is recognized best practice in quality assurance and enhancement 
um, acknowledged by, by TEXA and in the uh, um, higher education standards framework um, that students should have opportunities to participate in academic governance. And so all institutions across um, the sector in, in Australia are working uh, in this way. Um, I think also there's been an increasing recognition over recent, um, recent years that working with students closely uh, as partners and making sure that the voice of all students across a diversity of, of, of our student cohorts is, is, um, is visible, is transparent and is being heard, that students have opportunities to uh, put forward their experiences and their views about, uh, about their needs and how, how institutions can support them. But this is a powerful way to address barriers to higher education success for underrepresented and disadvantaged groups. So there's a very strong um, uh, focus, I think, in, in this work on diversity and inclusion, which is starting to emerge, not only in the Australian uh, sector, but across the world. We are, of course, um, post 2020 now, we're not post pandemic, um, but the 2020, I think, is recognized as having been an incredibly revealing catalyzing and transformative moment for the sector, revealing in a number of ways, certainly in relation to matters of um, student equity, for example, and digital access, uh, when we all had to make that pivot uh, to online. And of course, online is still very much with us, um, but also um, because of the transformative impact that um, that it's having on the way in which uh, universities are delivering uh, learning and teaching and student experience, moving towards more hybrid kind of models um, of, of, of hybrid campus, building in digital much more firmly into what we do in learning and teaching and student experience. And um, we need to work with, uh, as, as we make our decisions at institutional level about direction of travel, uh, we need to work very closely with students to inform uh, how, we, how we move forward. And of course, as, as I said, 2021, um, challenges for students, challenges for institutions. Um, in Australia, we have new federal policy settings, new funding settings um, for um, higher education affecting students and institutions. Uh, we have um, closed borders still, uh, with many students um, still um, overseas, um, and uh, so, continuing disruption, and we also have a very complex uh, geopolitical uh, scenario. So um, we need to work really together with students um, to tackle, um, to chart our course really uh, into the future. Next slide, please. Welcome, Isaac. I'm delighted that you've joined us. How about I finish what I'm saying and then um, I can hand over to you um, and uh, and uh, we can, we can um, we can work like that. Um, it seemed to me, um, as I was reflecting on um, trends at the moment and issues in, in research and scholarship around this, this area, that there are perhaps four main themes. Or this question of authenticity, how we avoid tokenism and, and how we genuinely build authentic partnership and student voice activity in institutions. Um, how we can better build training and support for participation in, in representative roles and governance. And that's not only support and training for students, but also for staff. Uh, how we do tackle issues of, of diversity and inclusion um, in, in student voice and partnership and how we can develop our institution wide frameworks and initiatives. And I know that we're going to be looking at all of those kinds of themes today. Next slide, please. Just a couple of words about uh, the University of Adelaide's journey very briefly. Um, we um, have been on a journey around student voice and partnership over a number of years. We are committed to this, um, the, the ethos of partnership, the principles and values of partnership. Um, academic board here in 2019 endorsed uh, 11 partnership values, which um, were developed at in, for the institution by um, uh, a partnership group, a working group of students and, and staff. Um, we have been taking forward a number of in, in initiatives since then, 
um, to um, seek to embed partnership working in curriculum and learning and teaching innovation activities, working with student ambassadors um, and student partners in uh, co-design of curriculum and co-curricular activities, also closely with our representative student body, uh, the Student um, Representative Council here of our, uh, of our union. Uh, we've also been taking forward work um, to embed uh, student representation uh, more securely across the institution. One area uh, for that is in our uh, program and school reviews process, um, which has really been, I would say, substantially transformed by, um, by uh, including student participation in, in the formal processes for review. Um, in 2020, uh, we were very keen to um, work closely with students in our pandemic response. And I would judge that 2020 for us as an institution was really, a, has had a galvanizing effect on our student voice and partnership work. And I suspect that that's the same for many other institutions. Um, we were very keen to um, make sure that uh, students were at, at, right at the heart of our planning and decision-making as we were attempting to make the best decisions that we could to support students uh, last year in a very complex and uh, crisis um, context. And what we learned from those processes, we want to carry forward uh, right across our institution now. Um, so um, we know that things like having a really clear, compelling shared purpose is critical for, for, for effective partnership working. We know now that we can work more effectively in teams that cut across the organizational boundaries as we did last year and include our students in, in those teams. We know that we can um, work rapidly and make pragmatic decisions rapidly when we need to. And again, in including students with that. We know how important communication is and that we can do a lot to improve our communications with our student body, uh, using students to, to, um, to help us shape our communication approaches and strategies. So lots and lots to learn on for us that we are learning on uh, to develop a new student engagement framework at institutional level in 2021. Um, another initiative that I've noticed here is, is um, uh, that we're working on a, a course review, uh, a review of our course review process. And that um, it will have a very strong focus on student voice and how we can strengthen student voice and partnership in that area. So that's a little bit about Adelaide. That's really pretty much all I wanted to say. Um, next slide, please, which is my last slide. Um, just really to, to, to move us over into what I think for the, the SVA is our focus this year, representation, engagement and sustainability of the network and building the network across the sector. That's what we're going to be focusing on across the, the symposium. We are really fortunate to have international perspectives coming to join us um, the, today um, and uh, on Thursday. And of course, we're going to be hearing from um, Australian uh, institutions, um, different perspectives, different examples of work that's being taken forward. Thank you, everybody. It is an honor to be hosting this event, to be hosting the network itself. And now I am going to hand over to Isaac and very warmly welcome you. So glad you can join us, Isaac. Thank you. Na Marnie. Na Nari Isaac Kutnu with Janam. Na Tangi Wilta Gana Nanjari Mio. Marto Changa Gana Mirna. Na Wangandi Marnie Na Putni. Nadlako Yard Diana, Marnie Nadlo Tampente, Nadlo. Ghana Yard Tanga Tikinti, Nigeria. Hi, my name is Isaac. I'm a proud Ghana and Nanajiri man. I'm really thankful to have been invited here today to be a part of today's event. Uh, I'm not too sure where everyone's watching from today. Um, I understand some people may be watching from interstate, um, wherever you may be, whether you're interstate, uh, in a different nation um, besides Ghana country. I want to invite your spirits here to be with us on Ghana Country today, um, to be a part of um, a part of today's event on Ghana Country through spirit. I think it's really important that we acknowledge that as uh, for us people, uh, our Ghana people here, we're very uh, very mindful of the spirit world 
and uh, and how it plays a big part in our in our culture and in our uh, in our ways down here. So I like to always acknowledge that, and I want to invite your spirits to be here today. I just want to very uh, quickly acknowledge uh, my elders, uh, the ones who have really empowered me, uh, guided me, encouraged me, and taught me to to do this kind of um, the showcase culture um, through uh, performances and, and welcome to country. Um, if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be speaking language here today. Um, I wouldn't be practicing ceremony uh, like I'm like I'm able to, uh, getting painted up and and uh, and practicing ancient protocol. So I always like to acknowledge them. If it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be doing what I am able to. Um, so I always like to do that. I'd also like to acknowledge the ancestors, my ancestors, your ancestors. I invite them to be here with us all here today. Um, and especially with the spirits uh, of the people who are watching from other nation groups and, and other, other countries and uh, uh, interstate. I'd like to invite your ancestors along with you on your journey um, and your spirit journey here in uh, Ghana country. Um, as you can see today, I'm wearing a kangaroo pelt. So I'm very lucky because it's freezing here in Adelaide at the moment. So I thought I was already painted up before. I was like, I may as well check on the kangaroo, kangaroo skins and, and keep warm. It's freezing out there today. Um, so I reckon I'm gonna keep it on for a little bit longer after this, but I just wanna thank you guys for inviting me here today. Um, I mean, for me as a young Ghana person, it gives me the opportunity when I'm a part of these kinds of things to speak language and to practice culture. Um, so that's the main take I, I get from it is that I'm, I'm provided the opportunity to, um, to practice culture and speak language. And I like to tell people as well is that when we speak language here on Ghana country, it is an endangered language. It has been for quite a while. Um, so when we speak language, it keeps our people here, it keeps our community strong, it keeps our country strong. So when I'm given the opportunity to speak language for things like this, to share it with people, um, I find it really empowering um, and I find it really special that I'm able to do so. So I'm really thankful for that. Um, and I mean, coming from a long line of uh, stolen generation uh, in, in my family, uh, where, you know, with, with my Nana uh, coming from Stolen Gen, she was very lucky to have remembered quite a lot of Nanajiri and being one of the very few Nanajiri uh, fluent speakers out there. But for Ghana and my family, it's, it's been a very much uh, new language within my family being so endangered. Um, so I'm still learning it. Um, and this gives me an opportunity to continue learning as well. Um, and also for me is, is really special and important because I'm one of the first generations of my family to speak Ghana publicly again without being um, punished uh, for it as well. So I'm, I'm very much, uh, uh, I, I always like to acknowledge that as well. So I, I just want to thank you guys once again for inviting me here today and welcome to Ghana country. Natalia, thank you. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Isaac. Um, and what a wonder, wonderful welcome in that you've got that opportunity and for us to hear um, that spoken language, it's really something special. Um, I'd like to also acknowledge that um, the Gabi Gabi people of here on the Sunshine Coast of Queensland as well. And as I'm sitting in my office, I'm looking outside and I see beautiful kangaroos around me. So that's pretty something amazing and special. And I, I like to acknowledge the traditional owners of this land and um, pay my respects to the elders past, present and emerging. So um, moving on to the, um, the overview that Philippa has um, presented, I'd like to just share my reflections from a student's perspective of Student Voice Australia and student governance and what that looks like here at USC as well. So um, as a student within a university that has adopted a student's as partners ethos, I feel a great sense of uh, agency within my own learning and what I take out of my university experience. I'm part of a collective voice at USC, which is actively contributing to an enhanced student culture. We are not passive receivers of our edu education, but rather active within learning and teaching where our voices are truly valued. This can include working collaboratively to improve campus culture, adapt ways in which we learn and provide relief and support during this COVID-19 pandemic. 
Student Voice Australia has enabled staff and students from USC to learn from other institutions. So takeaways from the last SVA symposium in 2019 highlighted how representation can work differently at each institution and the challenges and successes that student representative groups have across the network. For example, it was discussed that some of the more successful models of governance had high levels of buy-in from the executive level. True buy-in and, and partnership is where an executive team can partner with a representative group of students and talk honestly and work collaboratively to solve problems. Networking opportunities such as the symposium and the more frequent practitioner and student networks has allowed for staff and students to share challenges and successes, as well as accept feedback and consideration to build a strong culture of authentic student engagement. Such discussions enable SVA to curate resources available for institutions to use. As Philippa um, mentioned last year, we actually worked together to create a, uh, a resource to induct student reps. So in consultation with Mia Watson, Felix Eldridge, Chris Hall, uh, who are students within the SVA network, as well as Ashley Allen, the, the previous coordinator of Student Voice, and Kate Walsh, um, we were able to share our experiences as students and staff to develop a generic resource that any institution could utilize to induct their student reps in accordance with that step up good practice guidelines. In this development, USC then amended the current student rep inductions that we have here to be embedded with this material. So recently, the feedback from the USC's newest student reps have indicated that the inductions are a far more engaging way to set up expectations and learn the processes within their role to effectively represent the student voice, which is something really cool and I'm proud to be a part of. But moving forward, one of the challenges faced is the continuation of student voice across discipline and cohorts. Authentic partnership requires sustainable engagement from a diverse group of students, but students live complex and diverse lives. This became particularly evident within the COVID pandemic context. COVID-19 has fundamentally changed the way we learn and interact, and this has added a new level of complexity to all of our lives. And educational institutions will continue to feel the effects of the COVID pandemics for years to come. But as with all challenges comes the opportunities where authentic partnerships can emerge. An example of successful student staff partnership was reflected in the COVID pandemic context when USC executive and Senate was able to collaborate to provide relief for students caught up during job losses, increased caring responsibilities and new modes of learning. From these collaborative discussions, the adoption of a temporary grading system and the delivery of health and well-being services were promptly and effectively implemented. One challenge faced to USC's governance structure through the COVID pandemic has been the implementation of the third tier of student groups within the structure. Last year, myself and student colleagues began recruiting student, sorry, last year, myself and student colleagues began recruiting student reps for the expansion of the governance framework during face-to-face -face restrictions. It became clear that we must have flexibility in how we recruit and train new reps. The constantly shifting COVID-19 restrictions meant high rate of turnover and difficulties creating awareness. But from this, one thing we have learned is that student partnership needs to be appropriately recognized as well as strongly connected to the developing skills. Sustainable student engagement requires a student to feel above all else heard where their opinions are valued. Students also need to connect developing skills with the dedication that they put in. Such principles are reflected within Step Up Guidelines and USC Student Leadership Award, yet we must go further. The next step in discussion across the SVA network is how to engage with and listen to a diverse range of voices and how do we broaden representation, which is sustainable for the long term. At USC, our student representative structure attempts to provide opportunities to amplify student voices across disciplines, campuses, interest groups, but we are constantly refining what this looks like. Active representatives within the structure discuss how, how the structure can be improved to capture a more representative voice. In this way, the flexibility of the governance architecture can enable a more sustainable approach to student representation, which suits the ever-changing, diverse, and complex lives of students. The ability for students and staff to connect and learn across institutions can assist in implementing measures to ensure students are supported where needed and recognized for their contributions. The Students as Partners program at USC supports student-led experiences through engagement at each of the campuses and schools, yet these fostered partnerships with clubs, sporting, and campus events have been disrupted by COVID, which has affected the way in which we engage with campus life. 
by discussing such challenges within the symposium, we may discuss ideas on positive sustainable engagement in a new world of flexible learning within tertiary education. With today's key themes of representation, engagement, and sus sustainability in mind, I hope that students at today and Thursday's session will be able to learn from one another and readily apply key construct discussed to their role as a student rep to ensure a, a diverse range of student voices are heard. I also hope that from the symposium, students and staff are inspired by one another to instill sustainable goals within their institution for long-term student partnership and engagement, which will reflect the moving diversity and complexity of students' lives.